uh, good morning. <laughs> so today we are having a second session. And then uh, today we have a very different topic. Yesterday I talked about the six yogas of the Narupa. And uh, today is a very simple, very important, very effective topic. Yeah. So I always used to tell the people that uh, live strong and happily. So today's the topic is about the regarding about the living very ha living happily and uh, yeah strong. So actually, before starting this topic, why? I was get very much uh, inspired by the living happily is that I was trained in the monastery when I was age of five. And uh, in the monastic system, when I was training, it's a very strict monastic system. Plus, then I have to study the philosophy, go to the debate, and uh, memorize and the study the lot of different subject. And uh, I still remember that when I was age of seven, eight, like that in the monastery, the puja and the prayer session, when I play, all the seniors, the old monks, they will show me the very furious face and tell me, cannot play, cannot play, no? I was small and looking at all these old monks, all serious face, no laughing. So I was just the one kid at that time, small kid, wondering that the, why I cannot play, why I cannot laugh. And that this is the how the monastic system they was, I was get trained. Then when I reached age of 18, I so went to the one cave in the South India. There I saw the one Buddha, old statue of the Buddha. When you look straight to the Buddha's face, it looks like a Buddha's meditating very seriously. When you look from the right, you will see the Buddha smiling. Moment that I found it out that this is the Buddhism is the, to teach us how to live happily, how to love, not to show the serious face all the time. <laughs> so that's why, that's why I think the purpose of the life is that to live so leap happily. So that is the purpose. So that's why in my monastery in the Nepal, I introduced the monks football, volleyball game. I always tell that uh, people that uh, now soon I will bring the football team of the, my monastery, monks football team. This will create the history. Up till 2,500 years, no football team in any Buddhist monastery. I know that some of the old masters might be not happy with the, my decision, but they have a no single point to prove me that I was doing the wrong. Because I know the Buddha's rule exactly what the Buddha says and what the Buddha is not said. So, so, so that's the thing. So that's why the, I just want to tell that the, this topic is a very much importance. Why I'm saying the very much importance. Because in the, so then the, it really, after seeing that Buddha's the statue, it really changed me a lot. Then it bring me the more smile, laughter in my life. So if I, if I, so, sorry, if I go, like that, I mean, the, if I live the life with the very serious, I don't think that today you will see me a laughing. Yeah, so now the point down the to the back to the point of the leaf strong and the happily. First thing is the here that the one thing, as I mentioned the yesterday, when you, when you, 
pursue or when you desire or when you wish for the happiness, what does that, that mean? That means that the prison and that, that means that the, you are not happy at the moment right now. When you wish for the happiness, when you desire for the happiness, what does that mean? That means that the, you are not happy at the present moment. So, so that's why the first thing is to hear that the one thing you have to understand, what is the definition of the happiness? This definition of the happiness, what is happiness? This can be, can you check this one? What is this? I'm not so sure whether this is working. Yeah, so, so definition of the happiness. So what is the happiness? So it can be changed. For the people to people, the definition of the happiness can be very different. It is not the same. So people who is a very greedy, for them, the wealth is happiness. People who loves to eat the food, for them, the food is a happiness. People who like to travel, the traveling is a happiness for them. So that's why the definition is changing all the time of the happiness. For people to people, time to time. So now the thing is that the, how do we pursue the happiness in our life? How we pursue? Very simple way, let me tell you the one example. When you are carrying a bag on your right shoulder, when you get tight or pain on the right shoulder, what do you do? Definitely, you will change for the left shoulder. Exactly, we are doing the same. When you are not happy with the, your old car, you will change that car. When you are not happy with the old house, you will change that old house. When you are not happy with the current wife and current husband, you will change that. That, you all are doing that. That is the way how the, we pursue the happiness. This is one mistake we are doing it. Changing, very simple solution. You are not happy with someone, change that. You are not happy with that clue, change that. So will this changing, you are not knowing that how long you will change, how long you will go on a change and change. That is the, so that's why the, this is the, you have to change this habit. You have to change this habit. Change this habit, this habit have to be changed. So that's why, that's why the changing the habit, okay? But the, I know it's a very difficult to change your old habit. Most difficult thing is in our life is uh, changing the, our old habit. Let me tell you the one story. There is a one person, he works more than the 40 years in the railway. So after the retired from the, his job, he lived in the house nearby the train station. Whenever train passed from the, his house, what he do is he counts the every compartment of the train he used to count. Everyone tells him the why you are counting the compartment of the trains. You already left the railway job, you get retired. He used to tell that I cannot stop counting the compartment because that is my habit. I was counting the compartment for 40 years. Now I cannot stop it. Every train passed from the his house, he will count the compartment of the train. One day, he was having the picnic in the front of the his house in his private garden. His grandchildren and his sons and the daughters all came. They're having a very nice time. One train passed. He didn't count the compartment. Second train passed. Still, he didn't count the compartment. His grandchild was a surprise and asked him, Grandpa, 
Today I saw that the, you are not counting the compartment. I saw the two train pass nearby the, your house, but still you didn't count the compartment. Why? The old man told the, his grandchild that today is Sunday. I don't walk on Sunday. That is a habit, old habit. Now here to learning the how to live happily. First, you have to change some of the, your old habits. Habits and the, here I will tell you the very three simple steps. Okay, very simple steps. How can bring, how can help you to bring more happiness and the joy in the, your life, okay? Three simple steps. So, I call this three simple step as yellow magic. Do you know that the, my name is Kang Sir? Kang Sir Minsa, in Tibetan term, Kang Sir Minsa, yellow house. Now don't ask me that why my name become a yellow house, okay? Then I have to go to two, 300 years, the history and the talk, very deep in the history. So I don't want to go back in the history. So that's why I will call this three simple state a yellow magic to helps you to remember much easier. Are you any familiar with the term blue magic? No. Okay, very good. If you're not familiar with that, I will not explain that. Anyway, so yellow magic, okay? So there are very three simple steps, okay? First step, stop searching. Stop searching. What does that mean is that don't search and the pursue for the happiness. More you pursue and search the happiness, you will get far away from the happiness. One time, one man came to the Buddha. So he asked that I'm not happy. I used to have the good family, good property, but I'm not happy. How can I be the happy? So Buddha told him the one thing, stop searching. Stop pursuing for the happiness. More you pursue, more you desire, more you will get far away. So that's why now you will ask me the how can I stop this pursuing the happiness? How can you stop the searching for the happiness? Very simple. Let me tell you the one saying. If you feel sad, if you feel sad, you are living in the past. If you feel anxiety, you are living in the future. If you feel peace, you are living in the present. So that's why the stop searching, stop pursuing the happiness is very simple. Live in the present. Live in the present is a, let me tell you with the one story, then fully you will understand that how you have to live in the present. There is a one old master, Old master in the, his last stage of the, his life and he's lying on the death bed. He is going to die in the few moments later. So all the, his old students gathered front of the, him and the, asked him, now do you have any final advice for us? So one student, he went to the market to get the master's the favorite cake. When that his student came and the bring the cake for him. And the master tried to eat the cake, but he is very weak. He can only bite one or two, but very weak. But the most, the senior student told the master, we are here to waiting for the, your final advice. What's your final advice? Master told the student, cake is delicious. The cake is delicious. That is the food that master that become the ir irrelevant. He was just enjoying the cake. So this is the, from that story, you can learn the, how to live in the present. Um, it was three or four years back, three years back in 2019, I was giving the, like a post doctorate exam in the North India. After the lunch, I have to go and give the exam. I have to recite around 60 to 70 pages. What I memorize in front of 100 monks. I cannot look the book. I just have to recite that. 
So after the lunch, I have to go and give the exam. So while I'm having the lunch, some student, at that time, some student came from the state and they asked me the question, Rubuchi, do you feel nervous? I told him, I told them, lunch is delicious. So, so lunch is delicious. This is the step. When you, whatever you are doing, just be in the present. When you're drinking the water, just enjoy the water. When you are driving, just enjoy the drive. When, mostly, I don't drive here. Most of the time when they drive, I just enjoy the scene. So it's very hard for me to talk in the car because I enjoy the view. Otherwise, I will miss these all beautiful views. So maybe who drive in the cars, they might experience that. <laughs> anyway, so that is the first step, okay? Now the second step is uh, changing the perspective. I call it the first step, stop searching. Second step, changing the perspective. Changing the perspective, I used to tell the so many times to people that problem is not problem. Perspective toward problem is a problem. So what you have to do is a lot of times you have to change your perspective, how you look at the things. Changing the perspective, our perspective is very much based on the, our self-cherishing attitude and our ego. Let me give you the simple example. I always give this example all over the place wherever I give the talk. After this session, after this session, if we take the group photo, after this session, if, after this session, if you take the group photo, and uh, once you get that group photo, to whom you will look first? Hmm? To whom you look first? Yourself, am I right? Definitely yourself. Then you will look at the, that group photo and the first thing you will see the how you look in that group photo. If you look good, I'm sure you will keep that group photo. If you don't look good, you will delete that group photo. So this is the how the, our perspective is built on. Self-cherishing attitude, we call that. So that's attitude. So that's why the, our perspective is that, that the, based on the self-cherishing attitude, the, you will, that's why, whatever things happens in your life, whatever something bad things happens in your life, always that's why you ask the yourself the question, why me? When you lost something, you will ask, why me? When you something, when you had the, some challenge or difficulties, you will ask yourself that, why me? In case if you win the super lotto, you will never ask yourself, why me? So this is the one of the thing that the perspective have to be changed. So perspective, what you have to change is the one, the bad things happens. Don't ask yourself, the why me? Just learn to accept it. When the Buddha gave the teaching, you know the, what the, he gave the first teaching. He talked about the truth of the suffering. Is that teaching us to the accept it? So that's why when you, what the difference between the remembering someone and the missing someone? The person who you love, not nearby you, once you can accept it, that's called that you remember that person. Once you cannot accept it, you miss that person. What the difference between the tolerance and the anger? Something happens, some condition happens which you really don't want. Once you can accept it, that's called the tolerance. Once you cannot accept it, that triggered your anger. So very much is on the, depends on the accepting. So that's why the whatever things happens, unfavorable things happens in your life, first thing is a learned accept it. Best way of accepting is that we are in the samsara. 
This is the one reality of the samsara. So think that things happen, bad thing happens because we are in the samsara. Am I clear? Huh? So just learn that. Okay, when the bad thing happened, don't ask yourself, why me? Just accept it. Think that. So that's why the sometime I used to ask the student, how are you? When they say they are fine. I used to tell the joke for them. Wow, that's a really great. You are fine in samsara. So that's why. So you just remind yourself that all the time that we are in the samsara, they will be the challenge. They will be the problem to accepting. Okay. So that the, once you can accept it, then it makes it much easier to overcome the challenges or the difficulties. So that's why they're changing the perspective, okay? Am I clear with that point, no? Changing the perspective, okay? Second point, change the perspective. So normally in my life also, I face that also a lot of challenge and the difficulties I also used to face. But always, whenever I have the challenge and difficulties, I remind myself that uh, I'm in the samsara. They have the challenge and difficulties. That is the, yeah, so the changing the perspective, okay? Now the third thing, simple is counting the blessing, okay? Counting the blessing. Just meditate or just later, you just close your eyes and the look into yourself and the See the what the good things you have in your life. What the good things? There are the hundred of the good things in your life. But only thing is you, you are not seeing it. Because you are not looking at it. You only look for the what you don't have. You are not looking at the what the good things you have. Count the blessing. Just search, look into yourself and count the what, how many good things you have. I'm sure there are the hundred of the good things in your life. Okay, now don't ask me the what the good thing I have, okay? <laughs> normally, normally many of the you might know or many of the might you many of the you might not know that uh, I don't use the smartphone. I use the own smartphone and uh, I don't use the such a gadget which called the more than ten dollars. Whatever that you can see with me like a uh, briefcase or things. These are the people that I'm using the second hand used one. So whatever using them, the gadget, these are the used ones, second hand. I never use the some like a suitcase or the gadget, which is the fresh new one. So still I see the very good things in that. So that's the point is that the counting the blessing must look into the, your life and look into the yourself and the find the, what the good things you have in your life. Good things. So that you have to keep on counting. Every day do it, okay? Every day, that is the best practice. Even you meditate or this deity or that deity or Buddha or like that. I don't think so you will see the certain effects. But if you start to count the good things what you have, for seven days, definitely it will change. If it don't change, just come to me, okay? Because I can assure you, now you will tell me the how can I assure you? Very honest with you. Very honest with you that uh, these, after this, we are having the initiation rituals. These are, there's no guarantee at all. Today, what you receive the initiation, will it benefit you or not? No one knows. Even the master who gave the initiation himself is not sure. How can be you can be sure? What today, what I teach you that these steps, definitely it will benefit you. Because, now come back to the point, because I applied this meditation method in the Taiwan, one of the biggest hospital in the Taiwan, with the Patients, I mean, lots of the people who are suffering from the stress. Still, you can watch that documentary, okay? Later on that documentary, I make the book, Joy After 14 Days, okay? So then we do the research, questionnaire papers, and find it out that seems a lots of people can benefit just for practicing for the 14 days, okay? So that's why, that's why what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is that the, 
saying is that looking at the good things what you are having it okay so have you heard the term in the buddhism called the rejoice rejoice so rejoice is that saying that uh, looking at the good things so that's why the, if you look at the whole the lamrim's the practice structure lamrim practice structure it is teaching us to see the good things what you are having so you have heard about the precious human rebirth no in the deep down the final message it was giving us to see that the what the good thing you have human body it is a very precious to achieve final message okay it's giving that if you look at the precious human rebirth and also have you heard the terms called the buddha nature it is also telling us that not only you all the sentient beings having a such a good thing the potential to become the buddhahood these all final message they are teaching us to see the what the good things that we are having it okay so these are the three simple steps okay three simple steps shall i have to repeat or not really oh well <laughs> because why because whenever give the, i give the these kind of the topics i really wants that pass the message to the people because this is let me go back to the story my own life experience very long time back very long time back my cousin brother was studying in the south india city he told me that his friend is going through the depressions and the wants to meet me so then i told him that he can come in the meet monastery after the weeks later i was busy that time so three or four days later my cousin brother called and told me that the, his friend commit the suicide so sad no? that is a very sad that was the so 20 of years back so that's why really i want to bring these message to people whether they are the buddhists or non buddhists i don't mind at least i can bring the some happiness and the joy into their life that is the my purpose bring the joy or happiness even they can bring the one smile on their face i feel i'm succeeded that is why that that's why the these topics i really want the people at least they can try it try and the she at least bring the some of the joys or the happiness into their life okay so that's why the three step maybe re i will just repeat the steps okay first thing is that the stop searching okay living in the present second is a changing the perspective third is accounting the blessing okay these three steps you can carry on that and the practices okay if you if it didn't benefit you in the two weeks really you can connect me okay i'm really want to do something okay for you and to bring the joy in the your life okay okay now the second session in the initiation whether it if it didn't help you then don't come back to me okay there is no guarantee at all of the initiation okay <laughs> you cannot complain me okay okay and then this teaching first second teaching you can complain me if it didn't work okay then <laughs> yeah, okay so beside that still i yesterday as i mentioned now here i'm trying to talk with the doctors and the bring the some of the meditation session to help the people to bring the more the stronger the body immune system so once i have the full i mean i've done the research as i mentioned yesterday i'm not so sure did i mention it yesterday so these yeah i yeah so i want to bring that meditation techniques after the research bring for the freely to the everyone so okay just thought to share that okay okay there's the three simple steps and uh, hope that uh, you can go with it and uh, now i leave for the five minutes So five five minutes for the question answer session. After that, then I will start for the that the initiation. Okay, before starting the initiation process, I have to do the small preparation prayer. That when I do the preparation prayer, you can take the you can go for the restroom or to take a ten minutes like that break. Okay, I will prepare for the preparation prayer. Okay, so now I leave for the five minutes for the question answer session because at after initiation. after the initiation they won't be the question answer session okay
Thank you, Rinpoche. Thank you. How can I best remind myself to do this when I'm upset? Okay. When you are upset, I will teach you the one thing. Normally, when you get the upset, your minds will think that the reasons or the thing that incident which makes you upset, you will think that again and again, again and again. So for when you are getting the upset, I will teach you the two things what you have to do. Whenever you get upset, just inhale and exhale the breath, try to distract your mind. Focus on your breath, okay? Distracting. Let me tell you the one story. I think that's a long time back. In the monastery, there was one small kid monk who was not studying the properly. Then I called him in my room. Then I, then I scolded him. I used a very harsh word to him and scolded for the maybe two or three minutes. You are stupid and you are horribly wise. Two or three minutes, a very harsh word. Then I asked him the one question. Did you get angry? That small kid monk told me that no, he didn't get angry. So I asked him why. I used a very harsh word towards you. He told me he was not listening to my talk. He was just thinking the cricket game. <laughs> exactly. This is the what you have to learn. That is the winter incident. This is a very simple, no? Sometimes when you become the more smart, more intelligent, but you will in the reality, you are being the more stupid. <laughs> so that's why. So when you think they're upset, so what you have to do is not to, to distract your mind and just focus on your breath. So distracting. First time might be difficult. Second time, third time, you will get more and more easier. So that's why the, you, that's why there's a very famous the Zen story. I really like that story. I share with that for the, so many times that story. One mother with a single child. She lost the, her son. When the mother lost her son, she was so unhappy, so upset. So she decided to commit a suicide. Lots of the people tried to convince her not to take the extreme step. She was not listening. So one of the neighbor asked the master, Zen master, master, and they came to teach the teach it, teach the her. Huh? So the master told, told the mother that the, I can help you. Mother told that I'm not here to listen to any of the, your teaching. I decided to commit a suicide. Master told the mother that the I can bring your son back from the death. I can make your son alive. Mother was a little bit curious. It is possible. Master said, yeah, very possible. If you can give me the answer for the, my question, then I can bring your son back from the death, make him alive. So mother asked him, the, okay, now just ask me the question. So master told her that the, when you have to produce the sound of the clapping, you need the two hand. How can you produce the sound of the single hand clap? So if you find the answer for this question, you will see the your son again back alive. So the mother started to think, think and think, week passed, month passed, year passed. After the three years later, Mother came to the master place and told the master that I think now I cannot see my son alive because I could not find the answer for your question. Then master told her, oh, you only find the answer. Mother was a bit surprised. So master told her that when I met you first time, you are saying that you cannot live single moment without your son. Now you live without your son three years, more than three years. So that's why the way our mind is get distracted. When the mother started to not think about her, what she lost, she can live. When she started to think of the her son whom she lost, then she could not live. So that's why the, when you're making, feeling the upset, 
So that's why you have to distract your mind, okay? Distract your mind not to think the incident for that. Inhale, exhale, just focus on the breath. One time, do it, two times, three times, then you will get much easier, okay? Okay, any other questions? Can take uh, questions questions online too. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm a mother of two kids, and I would like to teach my children these things. Do you have any advice for how to share these messages with children, young children? Teaching what? Um, these three steps. Three steps. Okay. For children, okay. <laughs> First thing is when you talk about a children, how old are your children? One is two and one is eight. Eight, okay. First thing is that uh, when you are saying the children, in my monastery, I'm raising around the six or 70 around the kid months. They are the age of five to the 17 like. Okay. How I train them? Now, the education is all the teacher and the stuff they are teaching, giving them. My side, I want to teach them the real, the make them the really the right and the kind and the very, I mean, the happy person. That I think that is my job. So that's why the sometime the, when they are having the break time, I will call the all the seniors, students, monks, and the, I used to tell them the one thing. Purpose of the life. I will teach them the purpose of the life is for them, is the purpose of life to, to help others, to benefit others. When normally, what we do is that when your kid don't study well, you will bring the, your kid and the show the people, the jobless peoples, and they tell them, look, if you don't study well, you will become like that. That's a regular advice. Normally, all the people give like that advice. But I used to tell that uh, when the kid is not studying well, take them and show them jobless people and to tell them, if you study well, you can help these people. When that is exactly what I'm doing in my monastery, I told, I'm sure this the kid monks and show that the laborers, how they're working, tell them how hard they're working. Understand the suffering of the others. In your kid cases, don't teach them how they have to live happily, okay? Teach them that to understand the suffering of the other. Bring, bring, make them more compassionate. Make your kid to understand the suffering, bring them the courage to help the others, to liberate the others from the suffering. Then the, he, they, your kid will break into perfect. So that thing, okay? For that, I think that you need these three simple steps, okay? <laughs> <laughs> because this job is a not that simple job, okay? You might sometimes the kid might understand, might not understand. You don't lose the temper. <laughs> okay. So you don't lose the temper and the temper, and the, you need to follow these three simple steps. And then to kids, you teach to be the more compassionate, okay? To teach the more talk about the sufferings of the other, to try to let them teach the compassion, empathy, let them feel the sufferings of the other. Then they will become the perfect human. Okay. Okay. Now we'll live for the okay, final one, last question. Okay. 